Welcome to Kim's Keto Kitchen, where I make delicious keto recipes that you can make easily in your own kitchen. So today, uh, I got a great deal at my local supermarket where I got uh, buy one, get one free cauliflower. So I'm gonna take one of these right now and use it to create some uh, loaded cauliflower mash that I can use uh, for future meals. I'm gonna show you how I freeze it and, um, and how easy it can be to freeze it. So I'm gonna take my cauliflower. What I usually do is cut the bottom off, plastic and all, um, cut saw right through that, and then use the plastic to put all the parts of the cauliflower that I don't wanna use so that it's e easily um, throw away. I would love to be able to compost someday um, some of our because I use so many vegetables and so many things that can be composted. But for today, I, um, I'm just throwing it away. So you can see how there is a core in there. You kind of want to make a, a V and cut, cut a, that portion out here, the stalk free. And you're going to find that it's going to make instantly make some florets for you. Um, going, I don't want to waste any part of this, so I'm just going to cut these small enough so that they can all, all cook down about the same um, time. So they're all about the same size. So I'm going to put them in my colander here. Throw away any of the green parts that you don't need. Now if you know, if anybody would like to add a comment and tell me, um, if you use the green parts for anything, like can you put it in a stew or can you put it in a soup or, you know, to make stock or whatever, the green part meaning the leftovers of your cauliflower so we're not wasting. Just let me know in the comments below if you do any of that, if you're able to use it. Because waste not, want not, right? So I'm going to use that V again and cut through, take those parts and get rid of it and cut those florets into about the same size pieces as the other ones, about that big. And what I love about cauliflower mash, the homemade kind tastes so much better than the stuff you get uh, refrigerated or frozen in the grocery store. Um, now, you know what, I don't, you know, it's, it's not bad in a pinch if you're really, really tired after a long day's work and it's very convenient, but I find that it tastes so much better when you make it yourself. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to rinse this, make it nice and clean, and then I'm gonna put it into my stock pot on my stove and fill it about halfway up. I'm not gonna fill it all the way, I don't fill it all the way up to the top of the um, uh, cauliflower. I fill it about halfway up so that it does steam a bit, okay? So I'm gonna bring this over, fill it about halfway, and I'm not going to put any seasonings in it at this point. I, my whole point is just soften this to about the consistency that a potato would be if you were going to make mashed potatoes. Um, so I'll turn this on, I'll get them tender, and then I'll come back and show you what my next step is. Welcome back. So it cooked for about 10 minutes, and I just wanna show you the consistency. It's exactly the way it would be if a potato, you know, it's very tender, just like a potato would be, crumbly, and you can put your fork through without any, hardly any resistance. So that tells you that it's done. All right, so I have a pot full here. And now I'm going to add, now I'm going to use a tool that if you have um, in your kitchen, it's, it's really handy, it's called an immersion blender. And I find this is really a great tool to chop down veggies, especially for soups or stews or, or for cauliflower, if you wanna get it mushy and, and down to um, the consistency that you need to make mashed cauliflower. So I'm going to use this to chop it down to the consistency I want. And I basically first chop, pulse it to get those big pieces chopped down. And then 
and then you start getting mushed enough. And this is probably going to be enough for a couple meals for my family. I use this, oh my gosh, it's so handy. Um, pull it out of the freezer, I'll show you exactly how I do it. It's so handy. I, in fact, I still have some in there. I just want to add to my stash. So let's get this mashed down. This is a great alternative to mashed potatoes, my friends. And when you're on keto, it gives you those same texture and flavor, kind of flavor. You definitely get used to it after a while. So it's definitely a go-to. I use it with pork chops, I use it with chicken, um, I use it with many, many dishes. So what I do is I'm gonna load it up just like you would for a, a loaded uh, um, potatoes. So I'm gonna use cheese, about a half a cup of cheese. That's per one cauliflower, about a medium-sized cauliflower. I am going to use just a dollop of daisy, or a dollop of sour cream of your choice. I like the macros in the Daisy Sour Cream. Um, let's see, what is it? It's for two tablespoons, it's one carb. So I'm just going to do about a couple tablespoons. And you figure this is going to go for two meals for three people. I'm going to do a dash of cream to make it creamy. Probably about a couple tablespoons of cream. And now come the... Uh, spices. I'm going to use pink salt, about a tablespoon. I'm going to use some pepper. If you have white pepper, I don't really care for the taste of white pepper, but some people like to use white pepper in white um, food. Uh, here's some granulated onion, sprinkle, and some granulated garlic. So these are all basic tenants of a loaded mashed potatoes. So using the immersion blender, let's get that blended up. Oh, it's really starting to look like mashed potatoes. Letting that cheese melt in there. Oh, this looks stupid. So good. So good. And good for you too. Cauliflower is a tenant of keto and broccoli. I use, I eat an awful lot of both, and which has helped me lose those 30 pounds. Um, let me show you here. It's, it's definitely creamy. Looks like mashed potatoes, doesn't it? So now I just want to give it a taste test to make sure I don't need anything more. So I'll use this bowl here. I'm just gonna put a little bit in there to give it a taste test and see if it needs anything. Let's see. Oh, that's absolutely perfect. Oh, I could just eat that for lunch. Creamy. Oh, I think it's better than mashed potatoes. After a while, you lose those tastes for the foods that you used to love. And this certainly hits all those notes and textures that I'm used to. Mm, so good. All right. So now I'm going to let this cool a bit. And then I'm going to come back and show you how I prepare it for the freezer. Okay, we're back. It's nice and cool. So now I'm going to show you how I put this in my freezer. So I use these, uh, are they quart size? Um, freezer bags. And I roll them up like this and open it so it rolls up like that. Put it into a cup. <clears throat> and then using, I guess I could use a ladle at first. I'm going to put enough in there for a meal. So I'm gonna do a couple of scoops, half scoops, and then take it out. If 
Okay, and you notice I've labeled Kali Mash and today's date, and I put it on the pan, open it up, put it on the pan, and then flatten it out so you get all the air out. I completely flatten it and zip it tight and then flatten it like that. And I put it on a cookie sheet flat like that. So then when I, when it's, I put it in the, um, all of them into the freezer and then tomorrow morning I'll get up and they'll be flattened like books and I stack them in my freezer like that. So it's very easy to pull out and it's very easy to, um, it doesn't take up that much space in your freezer when you're just throwing a big lump like that in there. Um, this makes it a lot neater in the freezer. So I put it in a jar like that, put this over the edge. And the reason why you do that is so that the, whatever mixture you're putting into the bag doesn't get on the front and get all messy. And this makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna put a couple of scoops there. Probably gonna get only a couple bags this time, but that's okay. I usually do in bulk, I usually do like four at a time. I just, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna save the rest of this for my lunch today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use that other hat of mac, of mac, uh, cauliflower, sorry. And I'm going to show you how to make an Alfredo sauce with that other one. And I'll put that one up the day after. So there we go. There are our two packages of cauliflower mash. And those are gonna go right into the freezer and be used definitely soon because they're so yummy and so convenient to pull them out. I usually pull them out about a half hour before I will eat them. Just set them out on the counter on a paper towel and let them um, warm up just a bit so that I can crack it into shards, you know, with my hands. And um, this is after they're frozen, of course, when I'm going to eat them. And then I take them, those shards, and I put them in a wide bowl like this one. I put all the shards that I've cracked into the bowl, cover it, put it in the microwave. And that way, um, if you take this out and you let it completely thaw out, you're gonna lose some of that cauliflower mash on the bag. This way you don't lose any of it. You you're able to break it into pieces and put it in here and then you have a clean, empty bag. Um, I also like to reuse my bags. Sometimes I'll wash them, and the bags, and I'll hang them out to dry, especially in the summertime. Um, and then I reuse them a second time to save on plastic. Um, so that's it. That's my easy way to make cauliflower mash. Oh, you can also add um, chive, dried or fresh. You can also add some butter. I didn't put any butter in this time because it looked creamy enough with, this, with everything else. Um, and you can also put bacon bits in them. Um, parsley, the sky's the limit. Uh, make it your own. And, and take this recipe as your own inspiration to uh, make it your way. So I will see you tomorrow where I'll be making some beautiful cauliflower Alfredo sauce. Um, so thanks for coming in today to Kim's Keto Kitchen and we'll be seeing you soon. Have a great day.